What's going on, y'all? Saturday morning. We are headed out to go get some bait. And we're going to do a little fishing today. It's a gorgeous day. I think the uh, temperatures are supposed to be right around 76 degrees. The wind is light right now. It is expected to pick up a little bit later. I would have liked to already been on the water. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I would have liked to already been on the water. But Sherry has a business meeting this morning. That's going to last till about noon. So I'm running around. I'm getting everything ready for when she gets off of work. We will have everything loaded up. We're going to hit the road. I got to get this uh, mop on my head cut. Shave my face. Got to get looking like a handsome devil for this uh, YouTube video we're getting ready to put together. Should be a good one. Going to do a little surf fishing out of uh, Merle's Inlet, South Carolina today. I heard the blues are biting good in the surf. Spanish Max are out there. We're going to see if we can't get on some. I'm going to bring a shark rig with me as well. And I have a rod, a 10 foot pen fierce 2 uh, with a 6,000 class reel. And I'm going to see if I can't maybe get on a shark or two while we're out there. However, busy day ahead for the next couple hours. I'm going to go ahead and try to smack all this stuff together as fast as I can. I do have a couple new brews I want to try with you guys today. I may only share one with you so that way we can keep the uh, progress going. I uh, did a little research at the grocery store last night and I looked up a couple local brews that I think I'm going to like. So stay tuned, let me get all this stuff together, and uh, we'll see you on the water.
right, all right, all right. We're here in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina. We're all set up. We just need to get some bait on the lines. Like I mentioned earlier this morning when I was doing all my running around, the wind was supposed to pick up this afternoon, and it did pick up significantly. Uh, we're going anywhere from six miles an hour this morning to upwards towards 15 miles an hour with 20 mile an hour dust today. I hope my camera equipment's gonna work for me today. The past three videos I've put out, um, I've had some type of malfunction with my camera equipment, and I'm hoping for the best today. Let's go ahead and get the bait on the lines, and let's get something casted into the water and see what we can't do. All right, guys, so this is what I'm using today. Give you a shot of what I'm using. This is what I'm gonna be using for shark fishing. Hopefully we can get on some. I'm using an eight ounce pyramid sinker attached to a steel leader with a seven aught circle hook and some scrap trout pieces that I had left over when we did some fillets. I saved them, I put them in a baggie, named it crab bait, and that's what we're using. Normally, as far as the sinker goes, I like to use a Sputnik sinker. If you're not familiar with a Sputnik, uh, Sputnik sinker, what it does is it's shaped like a teardrop, and at the bottom it has four metal prongs that come out of the lead. And those metal prongs, when you cast it out there and the bait hits the bottom, they dig into the dirt so the surf doesn't roll your bait around. The best thing I could find today is an 8 ounce pyramid sinker. I'm hoping that when I cast it out there, it's heavy enough and big enough that the waves won't go pushing it around. Try to give you guys a full look. This is going to sit on the bottom and the bait's going to bob up and down in the waves. Hopefully it'll attack something. Now when I clean these up, I didn't rinse them off or anything. I just put them in there all good and bloody and fishy smelling and stuck them in the freezer. So hopefully they attract something. Let's give it a cast. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and cast this rig out. It's called a double drop rig, or at least that's what I call it. It's got a two ounce, two and a half ounce um, pyramid sinker on it. We're going to load it up with some shrimp and we are going to cast it out, see if we can't get on some blues, maybe some black drum, uh, maybe even some redfish that are running around in the surf. Whiting possibly. We're going to give it a try. So I learned this trick. I was watching a YouTube channel not too long ago. One of our favorite YouTubers we sit around and we watch all the time. He's not a fishing YouTuber, but he does uh, bushcrafting, so to speak, or adventures. His name is Matthew Posa. If you haven't checked him out, swing by his YouTube channel, Matthew Posa Adventures, and check him out, man. He's got some good stuff on there. I, I really do enjoy watching his camping videos, but he showed me a trick, and it's a magic trick, so check this out. Boom, now you have shrimp. We're all baited up, let's give it a cast.
fish. Everybody said they're running thick with the Spanish macros. I kind of figured I'd get onto one, but I almost ripped his face off. I set that hook nasty. He hit it hard though, so um, I kind of thought he was bigger than what he is. And my drag set low. I gotta take my drag up a little bit. Take a look at him. Just a little guy. Now I don't like eating bluefish. I think they're nasty. I caught a third, uh, not a 13, but a 11 pound, 10 ounce bluefish out there in Polly's Island a few years back. And uh, he ended up dying in the fight. So I had no choice but to eat him. I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy go before he dies.
guys can hear me with the wind. I'm speaking rather loud. <laughs> trying to throw my voice at the camera. Um, Sherry's on her way. She'll be here within the next 15 minutes. She'll be happy to know that we are actually catching some fish out here today. We've caught two blues so far. I've had a bunch of bites. No sharks yet on the big rod, but we did catch that blue on the big rod, so that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna take a little break though, and I'm gonna go ahead and review this local brew. I think it's that time. Not exactly five o'clock yet. It's 3.45, but it's five o'clock somewhere, right? I got a local brew today. I believe this one is out of Charleston, the Charleston area. Let's go ahead and dig in and uh, try it out. All right, so what we're trying today is Snafu Brewing Company, Snafu Tang Sour Ale, brewed with oranges. It's 12 fluid ounces, 5.3 alcohol by volume, and it is out of the Charleston area. It is out of North Charleston, South Carolina. And it's brewed with oranges and coriander. So I'm hoping it's pretty good. I'm thinking it's more like a blue moon, if anything else. If you've ever had blue moon, it's pretty good. It's pretty smooth. Check out the can. says ooh baby you like it raw cuz snafu tang is brewed with pounds of raw super fresh oranges it's sour citrusy effervescent and so tart and refreshing you'll know you you'll know this juicy ale ain't nothing to funk with do you snafu got a slider into my koozie Aaron bought me Give it a crack. Yeah, nothing like a blue moon. It is very tangy. It's not bad, not terrible at all. Not bitter or anything like that. It's almost like a... orange sparkling water or something like that um, pretty decent I don't think I'd buy a six-pack if somebody had some hanging out I'd drink them but I don't think I'd be going back it's a little too tart for me it's not bitter at all it's just really tart it's like um, eating an orange peel or something <laughs> I mean if you've ever eaten an orange peel with more tang. I mean, it's really not that bad. However, I don't think I'd go out and buy it again. Check it out. North Charleston, Snafu Tang by Snafu Brewing Company. Most of my bait already, so we're gonna go ahead and rebait and cast it out again.
Sherry's on bluefish number four. That's four for the day. That's probably the biggest one I've or we've caught yet. So she gets here, she lands her first fish. Pretty exciting for her. We're gonna go ahead and let this guy go and we are gonna try again. Hope you guys can hear me okay. I know I keep saying that, but I can't uh, reiterate the wind enough. Uh, it's, it's really blowing out here. I haven't checked the phone at all. I wanna say 15 miles an hour, they said gust up to 20 miles an hour today. We had a better window, like I said earlier this morning, but Sherry had a uh, meeting, like I also said this morning, and it ran a little late, so I came out here by myself. I got set up, caught two bluefish right off the bat. Sherry's here now. She caught a bluefish right off the bat. I figured I'd just go ahead and sit and uh, conversate. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of posts and stuff on Facebook and a lot of people talking, a lot of my friends are talking, you know, bluefish, when you come out here, you can catch them with a piece of tin foil. And it's true, I mean, we're getting bite after bite after bite. And I did know that we were gonna come out here and it was gonna be ridiculous amounts of bluefish that's what we were gonna catch today. I mean, they're all little dinks, you know, nothing too big. Um, a couple of one pounders and that's about it. The last one Sherry caught was probably about a pound. Maybe about 16 inches. But, like I said earlier in the video as well, I've caught bluefish in the past and never really kept them. A lot of people say they're good for bait on the uh, piers and stuff like that. And that's generally what I used to do a lot of. I used to do a lot of pier fishing. And I've actually, in the past few years, recently just branched out into doing more surf fishing and a little inshore fishing and so on. I don't claim to be any type of expert angler or anything like that. I just figured I'd put some videos together for you guys. And, you know, I like talking fishing. I like seeing people's fishing pictures and stuff like that and just conversing about fishing all together. So I figured I'd go ahead and start this YouTube channel and uh, bring some of my adventures to you guys. We actually, um, the whole thought process behind starting the YouTube channel is. Sherry and I, we like to watch YouTube a lot at night. We don't watch cable TV too often unless it's a sporting event. You know, baseball games, uh, football games. So usually after we put the kids to bed at night, that's when we sit down and get to watch TV. And I like the fact that you can get on YouTube right there on a smart TV and just pick and choose what you want to watch. We've been watching a lot of different guys out there. And one of the most intriguing and the most interesting um, genres of YouTube channels to us is the camping stuff. We've been watching a lot of Joe Robinette, Doug Linker, and one of our favorites is Matthew Posa. I mean, that guy's just hilarious, man. And that's what I, I touched on that earlier, too, with the whole magic trick and everything like that with putting the shrimp on the bait. I saw him do it. He went out in the woods and he was breaking down his, his camp and he's kind of just standing there looking at his camp and stuff and he snaps his fingers, next thing you know it's in a pile. Snaps his fingers again, next thing you know it's all in his um, his dry bag for canoeing. So I thought it was pretty funny. I, I wanted to try to uh, I wanted to try to incorporate that in one of my videos. You know, thanks Matthew, if you're watching this, if you ever do see it. We love your videos, man. Keep up the good work. As far as Sherry and I go with our channel, we kind of want to incorporate some of what they do. And what they do is more like reality. They're out in the wild surviving for 10 days, canoe trips on dehydrated food and fish that they catch. And some of the angles that they do and the whole sitting down and just conversing with the camera, like they're just talking to anybody that they know. It's, it's, it's neat. I mean, it's, it's a really cool thing. You know, it is tricky. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I tried and tried and tried. The first few videos I was a little, um, let me guess, uh, let, let me say a little bashful, bashful. You know, just talking to a camera, it's a little weird. You know, sitting out here on the beach, some of the beachgoers that are out here and stuff looking at me like, what the hell is this guy doing? Talking to a camera. 
you can see some of them chuckling and stuff like that. It doesn't even bother me anymore. As long as I'm bringing entertainment to you guys, it doesn't matter, right? So, hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. If you're enjoying the videos, I would really appreciate it if you liked and, you know, left a comment. Let me know what I could be doing better. I'm open to constructive criticism. All the haters, I'm just going to ignore haters. If you ain't got nothing good to say, then I'm not going to really pay any attention to you. But I am open to constructive criticism. So if you think I can set up my shots a little bit, if you think my camera equipment could be a little bit better, which I, I already know it could be better, we're looking at getting a DSLR and a better microphone. Right now, the only thing I'm filming with is a GoPro and a which I have here, it's not even a GoPro. I like to refer to it as a faux pro, but it does the trick. So for that B-roll footage, man, it really does some, takes some good shots as you know, you've probably seen in this video, some of the B-roll footage. So I try to be creative with the shots I take with that. And you know, as far as camera goes, we're only using my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. We use mine and we use Sherry's. I have a microphone that I purchased for mine with the big wind protector on it. Uh, we'll find out later if it works good. It didn't work so good in Mount Pleasant when we uh, got blown away down there in Dar She Blows video that we put out a couple weeks ago. It did pretty good though on the DIY cooler video, the can you turn a $20 cooler into a $400 cooler, cooler video that I did. Um, the audio came out great on that, but I had a camera malfunction. So it always seems to be something. But we roll with the punches, man, and we try to make the best out of the situation. So this is what we're rolling with as far as camera-wise. Got my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus up there, and you can see the microphone. It's got the wind protector on there. You can see how it's blowing in the wind right now. But it is what it is. We're making do. Slowly our videos will get a lot better as far as electronics go. excited about it. As Sherry said to me last week, I was putting that cooler video together. She was like, babe, you're obsessed. It's like, I'm not obsessed, but I think it's pretty cool putting these videos together. It is interesting. You know, if you guys could see some of what I see on a daily basis when I'm out here fishing, I mean, you'd want to be out here every day too, so... Hopefully we can get the work to pick up and um, I will have a little less time to do this, but we're gonna keep pushing forward. I wanna try to do one video, nah, one video every week. If I could talk correctly, that would be great. We wanna put out one video every week and every other week we have the kids, every other week we don't have the kids. So every other week you'll see more of us just kind of relaxing at the beach and enjoying life. And then every other week you'll see more family-oriented fishing trips. So one video every week, that's what we're pushing for. How long they are, that's going to vary. I'd like to try to stay right around a 30-minute mark and try to bring you guys some of this beautiful scenery. So, while we wait, we'll go back to that whole YouTuber situation that I was talking about earlier, you know, with the uh, Joe Robinette, Doug Linker, and Matthew Posa. 
I mean, there's a bunch of guys on there, man, that we watch. Scrambled O is another one. But we really dig that bushcrafting stuff. And my thought was, Sherry was said to me one night, and she was like, babe, you should totally get out there and do something like this. And as much as I love camping, and I think it would be neat to get Aaron out in the woods and experience that type of stuff, down here in South Carolina, we got some creepy crawlies, man. We got venomous spiders, venomous snakes, alligators, bobcats, bears, coyotes, you name it. Not that I'm afraid of that type of stuff because, you know, I know personally that they're more afraid of you than you are of them. But I don't know if I could sleep on the ground and have something like that slither in on me or crawl in on me while I was sleeping. And then there's always the tent. We could do a tent. We could do hammocks. I see a couple guys on there using hammocks. But really, I figured it would be fun to do that. But what if we incorporated the style that, you know, those guys have into the fishing world? Like I said earlier, reality. That's what it is. I can't see how some of these people on YouTube go out and they catch fish and film all in one day. I'm not saying it's not possible. I know it's totally possible to go out and film if you've got the right equipment, the right people with you, and so on and so forth. But I'm doing this, this is just me. Every now and then, Sherry will take a clip of me while I'm out in the water or something while she's sitting down having a drink. But I don't have two boats. I don't even have a boat. So it's not like we could be out in Merle's Inlet on one boat and have somebody filming from another boat. I figured, you know, carry a couple tripods around with us, two cameras, a GoPro, and kind of just set them up all in different locations and kind of get some different shots and splice them all together via a editor. So far it's been pretty fun. It's going pretty good. A lot of my friends and family say it's pretty entertaining, so we'll see what the YouTube world brings as far as heat. Because I know there's some things out here that I could be doing better, but that's why I said I was open to constructive criticism. So, you know, if you see any shots I could be taking better, any ways I'm fishing, any certain way that I'm fishing that could be done a little bit better, drop some comments in that comment section. Just sitting back relaxing right now trying to dry off a little bit i casted the water back uh casted the water i casted the line back in the water for sherry so she's over there in the beach she's got a line in the water she keeps getting bites so i'm sure there's going to be another bluefish caught here in a few minutes we'll check in then hopefully i slam a jaws get jaws on the on the video, that would be sweet.
Sherry was walking the beach and she found herself a shark's tooth. Pretty cool. Add it to our collection. All right, guys. So we're wrapping it up here. My phone died, so we're using Sherry's phone. We don't have a microphone on it. I really hope you can hear me. We're going to touch base back when we get to the house anyway. I reeled in this blue fish. This is the one that I was using for bait. And something definitely was munching on it. I don't know if it was crabs or if it was a shark. If it was a shark, we probably missed a bite. So, anyways, we'll touch base when we get back to the house. And uh, I hope you can hear this audio. <laughs> All right, we're all packed up, headed down the highway. I know I said I'd catch up with you guys at the house, but Sherry is on her way to Five Guys Burgers and Fries to go ahead and get us a big old platter of fat, greasy deliciousness for dinner tonight. We had a pretty good day fishing, nice and relaxing. Windy as could be, I knew the wind was gonna pick up. And I also knew that we were only gonna catch bluefish when we were out there. Well, I didn't think we were only going to catch bluefish. I was really hoping for some type of table fare, something we could put in the cooler. But the name of the game is fishing, right? You go out and you try. If we were in a survival situation, we'd be eating good tonight. Five or six bluefish would, you know, feed us both. But we're not in a survival situation, so all you can do is hope for some of that table fare. And like I said earlier too, you know, I'm fairly new to the surf fishing game. The only type of surf fishing I've ever done is off of the piers, you know, and you can target certain species out there, but even then it's a, it's a crap shoot really. You put some shrimp on a hook, you cast out and you're either going to come up with croakers, whiting, blues, sometimes some black drums, sometimes some redfish, stingrays, sharks. I mean, the list goes on when you're out there on the pier, so. And there are certain ways that you can target fish when you're on the pier. But, you know, when you put a piece of shrimp on a hook, everything's going to eat it. We caught some, you know, pretty decent amount of bluefish today. And the last one I caught, I cut in half. I put it on the bigger 10-foot pen Fierce 2 with the 65-pound braid. And uh, I hooked the fish through the eye sockets hoping that it would stay on the hook when I cast it out. And that was the sole intentions of hooking it through the eyes was to be able to keep it on the hook when I cast it out. And it stayed on the hook just fine, but whatever bit that bluefish, it took about four inches of meat. There was about four inches of belly there after the head when I cut it in half and hooked it up. And it was all mangled when I reeled it in there at the end. So whatever I... I can't say hooked up with, but whatever bit that bluefish just missed a hook. So fishing's a game of trial and error. You live and you learn. Next time we won't hook the fish through the eye sockets and we'll try to hook it through the spine and hope that it stays on the hook. And whatever hits it next time will hopefully hook itself and we let the party get started. Very good day. Wind was brutal. I'm just going to apologize for the audio right now. I haven't been able to edit anything. Obviously, I haven't even looked at any of the footage yet. But I know that the audio is probably a little jacked up with the wind, so I do apologize for that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some good laughs. I hope you found it entertaining. If you did so, don't forget to subscribe and like, and head over to Facebook, 843 Fishing, two words, just put it in the search bar and we'll pop up. Instagram, 843 Fishing, one word, put it in the search bar and we'll pop up. We update daily on those two pages, so if you want to stay in contact with us, follow us there, and uh, 
see what we have to offer on a daily basis. As far as videos go, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And we will have, like I said earlier, I'm going to try for at least, at the very minimum, one video a week. Last week I ended up getting two videos out. But at the very minimum, we are going to try for at least one video. So in order to get that notification, you got to subscribe. Anyway, enough rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll talk with you on the next video. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it.